Greetings, I hope you're good and well. I'm doing a book review today for The Rational Male by Rollo Tomassi. Rollo Tomassi has written several volumes of this book, The Rational Male. I think there are about five in total. I'm reviewing book number two today, but book number two contains most of the, uh, the main ideas anyway. Okay. This particular one was published in 2017, I do believe, and the book is all about the intersexual dynamics between men and women. This book is primarily written for men to read, I would say, and it advises men on how to deal with women and it, it just discusses female behaviour in the sexual marketplace in general. The book claims to deliver something called a red pill to men. This is a reference to the film called The Matrix where Neo is offered a blue pill or a red pill. The blue pill would allow him to continue living in a dream world. The red pill would show him the, the cold hard truth. The claim here is that most men live in a blue pill world when it comes to thinking about how women are. Um, according to Rollo Tomasi, things are not as nice as they seem and he claims to deliver the red pill and to give men the, the harsh truth when it comes to women's uh, sexual strategies. The main tenet of this book um, is that women practice something called hypergamy. Hypergamy is a sexual strategy that women use and it's a sexual strategy that's basically advantageous for women and it's a secret strategy that the, they supposedly don't advertise it's like a secret sexual strategy that women use to their advantage and the, the, main, the main tenet of hypergamy is something called alpha fucks and beta bucks and I would explain it as this. Women are generally attracted to alpha males. They're generally attracted to dominant men, aggressive men and confident men. Alpha males are, are the confident men who kind of control the pack. The, the men who, who are very loud and they, they control the social dynamic. That's an alpha male. A beta male is a kind of shy, quiet man who, who's happy to follow rather than lead. All right. So hypergamy means women are, are wired evolutionarily to, to be attracted to alpha, alpha men. Uh, alpha males, sorry. And so, so when a woman is between the ages of like 16 and 30, she'll, she'll have sex with alpha males. She'll, she'll get into relationships with alpha males because they're the ones she's sexually attracted to and aroused by. But in her late 20s, sometime just before the age of 30, she'll have an epiphany and she'll realise that alpha males are not actually good for marriage. Because alpha males can have all the women they want, they tend to sleep with women and then get rid of them and move on to the next woman. And so at the age of 30, a woman needs to start thinking about her future. She needs to start thinking about somebody who's going to pay bills for her and maybe look after children. And then she'll have an epiphany. She'll think, oh, ha hang on. Maybe those beta males would be good to marry. I'm not attracted to them. They don't arouse me, but they're good at holding down steady jobs. And if I had a child with a beta male, he would be able to care for that child and he would be able to pay the bills every week or every month. So maybe I should be looking at those guys. The, the men who I've spent my whole entire life ignoring and rejecting, I, I'll marry one of those. That They don't turn me on, but they're good providers. So that's hypergamy. 
It's a sexual strategy that most women, or a lot of women, use. And it, it's got deep evolutionary roots as well. I, I was recently reading about meerkats. Don't ask me why, I was just reading an article about meerkats and it was a Wikipedia article and it, and it said within groups of meerkats the strong dominant males impregnate the females. They get all the sex and then the beta males, the weak meerkats, look after the babies. And when I read that I recognised this kind of alpha fucks, beta bucks dynamic. So it, it's very common in the animal kingdom and it has deep evolutionary roots. Thank you for making it to the halfway point of this video. This is a quick message to let you know that I have a science fiction novella due to be released on the 1st of October titled Thanks for the Memory. Thanks for the Memory explores a nightmare scenario which could occur if our obsession with social media continues to escalate. If you fancy giving this one a go, the links are in the description box. Now, back to the video. According to Rollo Tomasi in The Rational Male, women are wired to see a man for what he is, not who he is. That's quite a good distinction. Um, in other words, women are wired to, to see a man or value a man for what he can do as a kind of performer, not who he is. Um, what can a man do or what can he perform or what can a man provide? Women are wired that way. And in this sense he claims that men are actually the true romantics. Women are often thought of as the romantics and men are like the, um, the logical realists. But according to Rollo Tomasi, that's not true. Women are realists posing as romantics, whereas men are romantics posing as realists. With men, it's, when men look at a woman, they're not thinking about money and they're not thinking about what she can provide. They're, they're looking at the woman, maybe not for who she is. I suppose men like, are very visual and, they, and they, they want a good body and stuff. But in a sense, you could say that men are more romantic than women because women are wired to, to value what a man can do and what a man can provide. Although they do tend to keep that secret. Um, in an evolutionary sense... Women are wired to, to look for good genes and security. It's this provider thing again. Women want a good provider, they want good genes to pass on to their baby, and they want somebody who can provide for them. Whereas men are basically wired for gene spreading. Men want to just kind of have numbers and sleep with as many women as possible. It's this, it's this kind of dichotomy of interests again, this conflict of interests that I keep mentioning. Um, it, it, it's put in a good way in the book. Um, Rollo Tomasi puts it this way, for one person's sexual strategy to succeed, the other person's has to fail. Think of a seesaw, one end goes up, one end goes down. If a woman succeeds with her sexual strategy she will have that one man as a provider but the man will fail because that's not what he wants if the man succeeds however he will get to sleep with many different women but of course the woman will fail in her sexual strategy so for one person to succeed the other person has to fail sad but true there's a section in this book that talks about something called female solipsism. Solipsism is where you basically think that the world revolves around you. Um, a lot of women are raised to believe that um, they're very special. Women are brought up uh, to believe that kind of everything's about them and they're, they're very special. Whereas boys are raised to believe that they need to go out there and kind of do the work and fight and mess around. Um, think, think of an ant colony here. 
So with an ant colony, you've got the queen that's in the nest, looking after the eggs and laying the eggs. And then you've got all of these males who go out and do all the work and they find the food and they, they kind of build the nest and they're always doing things. And the, the males are basically expendable. The males are less important than the female. The female is like the big queen and the whole entire ant colony is all about her. The whole entire ant colony revolves around the queen and the eggs. That's, that's the idea that a lot of women are born and raised to kind of believe in. And that, that's a strong theme in this book. Rollo Tomasi claims that since the 1960s, where you had this big uh, feminist revolution in the Western world, the Western world has had a kind of feminine primary culture. And he claims that it's no longer easier to be a man. There's a big emphasis on the fact that nowadays in the Western world, like America and the UK, feminism has, you know, it's got such a strong foothold that um, women have all of these advantages and they practice this thing called hypergamy and it's, it's no longer advantageous to be a male. There's an interesting claim in this book about the male midlife crisis. There's a chart in this book, it's called something like a sexual market value chart. And it claims that women reach their peak sexual market value at around the age of 23 or 24. And then after the age of 24, they go down in value. Whereas for men, it's very different. A man reaches his peak sexual market value at around the age of 40, so men peak later. Most men have a midlife crisis at around the age of 40, and most people think a midlife crisis is just like, oh, you're getting old and you're going a bit crazy for a while, but don't worry, you'll get over it. They kind of dismiss it as a childish male thing. But Rollo Tomasi claims that a midlife crisis is is where a man can, on a subconscious level, he, he can sense that his sexual market value is peaking. Whether, whether he consciously knows it or not, he can sense that he, he's peaking at, at age 40, and he wants to make the most of it. That's why he starts wearing different clothes, or he might buy a nice car, or he might have, um, he might become a bit flamboyant, because wh whether he knows it or not, He's got this sense that he's becoming sexier and more appealing to women. And of course, you know, fair enough, he wants to make the most of it. So I, f I found that an interesting point in the book because the whole phenomenon of uh, a midlife crisis is quite interesting to me. I've often wondered what that's all about. And there's an interesting theory for that in this book, as I just mentioned. A book like this is bound to upset certain people. As I say, it's designed for men. Um, although Rollo Tomasi does, um, he does offer women counselling as well. If a, if a woman wants to learn how to improve herself in the sexual marketplace, I think um, Rollo Tomasi does kind of counselling courses for men and women. So it's not just exclusively for men, but I, I, can, I can see how a book like this will upset certain women. It's designed primarily for men to read. Um, but I, I think it's a very interesting book, and I think he's got some interesting ideas. The book I see the book as being about evolutionary psychology. It, it's about the evolution of men and women, and it's a subject that will always fascinate me, always. Um, it's got a terrible cover. The book cover is awful, absolutely awful that the editing is acceptable. The, the editing is not great. There are a few typos in there and stuff, but it, it's readable. Um, I gave this book about four stars, I think, on Goodreads. I gave it four stars. It's a good book. Should you read it? Um, if you're a man and you want to, if you want help uh, dealing with women, certainly read it. I would highly recommend it. Um, 
If you're interested in evolutionary psychology and you want to learn about men and women and the sexual marketplace, sexual dynamics, yeah, I've, I would recommend this book if you're into that. So, yeah, I think I recommend this book. It, it gets a thumbs up from me. It's controversial. It's bound to upset certain people, but that can be a sign of a good book. So, if you're interested in this topic, I would, I would recommend this book. I'm probably going to read book number one at, at some point. I should have read book number one first, of course, but I didn't. Um, I think they can be read in any order, but I'm, I'm going to read book number one at some point. But I've got the main ideas um, by reading this book. Okay, So there you go, The Rational Male, book two. Um, interesting, and it gets four stars from me. Thanks very much for watching. I'll be back in two weeks with another book review. In the meantime, try to have a good day on this sexual, evolutionary piece of rock we call Earth. Lots of love. Goodbye.